Hi, I'm Derek Skoletsky, CEO of Sherlock. You can find us at SherlockScore.com. Uh, excited to be part of this product-led uh, conference here, Summit. Uh, today I'm going to talk about account-based product engagement, what that is, uh, why it's important, and how you should really be doing it in order to operationalize and optimize your, your SaaS operations. So let's jump right in. One of my favorite Sherlock quotes is there's nothing more deceptive than an obvious fact. And the obvious fact that we'll talk about today is that SaaS businesses are account-based business. This sounds very obvious. If you have a SaaS business, this I'm sure resonates with you. Uh, you are not building or selling a consumer app where one user is the account. You're selling to groups of people in a business that are going to use your product. And it's essential that a critical mass of those people use your product in order to get any value from it, I'm sure. Sales teams, your sales teams and any kind of B2B software team have known this forever. They, when they go to sell a deal, they're selling into a business and that business consists of a group of people. They even have different personas for the types of people they're selling into, from gatekeepers and buyers and decision makers and influencers. And I'm not sure what that guy is, but these is, the point is that they are always viewing a deal as a collection of people that they have to uh, work with in order to get it done. And that's why every CRM in the market uh, organizes all the contacts and leads into accounts because that's how business software is sold. Took them a little while, but marketing is also cut on to this perspective. Uh, this is just showing the amount of Google searches uh, for account-based marketing. So you can see there just kind of middle 2015, it just kind of exploded, but account-based marketing is obviously one of the hottest trends in marketing today. Um, and any B2B software has to take this kind of approach, and that's because SaaS is an account-based business. But where we've really kind of lacked, and, and I would say missed the, missed the point here, is on the product engagement side. And that's where we really need to start assessing product engagement at the account level in order to really be able to operate our SaaS business correctly. And that's because obviously in SaaS, accounts sign up. Accounts adopt your product, accounts convert, accounts pay you on a monthly basis, accounts expand and obviously accounts churn. This is all done at an account level because in SaaS users may come and go, but the account is what stays forever until it doesn't. And that's kind of the nature of SaaS. And I think if you're not looking at product engagement from an account basis, from an account perspective, you're really missing an essential piece of your, of your SaaS operation. Um, and if you do do it, you're gaining an advantage. And we'll look at that here. So first, before I go into the advantages that I mentioned, what, what is account-based engagement? Uh, what am I really talking about here? Obviously, uh, at, a, at the highest level, it's pretty simple. Pretty simple. It's, it's really just organizing your user engagement around accounts at a very kind of fundamental level. You've got a bunch of users that are using your product and, and account-based engagement tracking really just organizes that usage into the accounts that they belong to as opposed to those users being kind of their own little islands. But more than um, just organizing the data, it's aggregation of the data, which is important when you're looking at account-based engagement tracking. So instead of looking at each one of those users again, individually on that account, you're gonna aggregate up that usage and be able to report on that and understand it at the account level. At the account level. And when you do that, you, get to do, you can do a lot of things with that. Not only can you just see that kind of usage data, but you also can get a sense for the scoring. You can do a scoring model, which allows you to score the engagement at that account level. You can then move one step further and look at trends in engagement at the account level. You can track at the account level their activation pro progress uh, as they start to adopt your product. You can understand as that group of people are, is using your product, how that activation is going. And you can start organizing those accounts in all kinds of different ways by tenure, the age of the accounts, by size of the accounts, all kinds of different things. Obviously, pretty obvious, this is really important to have all that data or organized and aggregated at the account level in order to do this kind of stuff. And I would argue it's really an essential perspective 
for your SaaS business. Again, if you don't have it, I think you're missing something. We've always looked at our SaaS businesses and asked about engagement at the user level. Who are my best users? What, us what users are doing this feature? How, how is that feature being adopted by users? But when you are able to shift your perspective and or aggregate that data at the account level, now you can aggregate or you can change your perspective to have all those questions, not only at the user level, but also at the account level, which is much more in line with the way you run your business. So that's great. So we, you get that new perspective. You can see some of the, the benefits of doing that, but really where's the business value for, for putting in the effort to get this account-based engagement? I'll, I'll highlight four here, uh, just to go a little bit more in depth with these four. But first of all, I just mentioned account activation. Um, if you have a SaaS product, certainly if you have a trial sign up or, uh, or a freemium offering, but even if you don't, account activation is an enormous part of your operation. You have to get those accounts from sign up to activated, which is first value if you want to call it that. Um, and you have to do that at a rate which makes sense for your business. Otherwise, you're just kind of throwing marketing dollars into ether. So for your SaaS product or any SaaS product, you may have a kind of an activation criteria that looks something like this. They've created an account, they've integrated data, they've invited three or more team members to the account, they've assigned three tasks and they've completed those three tasks with our product. So at this point, we're gonna say that, that account is activated and we can then put some sales effort against that, uh, have a CS effort against that, whatever. But this is not, all these things are not done by a single user for any of these products, any of your products, right? These are, these are things that are completed by different users. You may have one user come and sign up and she may need some help getting that data integrated. So you have another user doing that. She may come back and actually invite some team members to the account. One of the team members she invites is the one that's actually going to be doing the operational work in your product, assigning these tasks. And then obviously there's gonna be different people that come in and actually do the work and complete those tasks. So in this example here, you have four different users completing these five different tasks to get an account to an activated stage. So if you're not tracking your accounting uh, product engagement at the account level, there's no way you're gonna be able to determine whether or not an account is activated. And there's certainly no way you're gonna be able to track your progress or your success with your activation uh, of your accounts. And I would argue more importantly, you're never gonna be able to easily identify those accounts that are stuck or haven't got there. And these are the accounts that you have to take some kind of operational action against, whether that be in an automated way or a high touch manual way. The point is you've got to be able to easily identify where those accounts are. So that's activation. The second um, real kind of business value is, is being able to better manage your mature accounts. So obviously once they're past activation adoption, uh, maybe they've converted to paid. Now you've got to manage those accounts. Um, by aggregating this data at the account level, you're going to be able to assess health at the account level if you aren't aggregating that data. There's no way for you to tell whether one count, account is good or one account is bad. Similarly, or you know, right off of that, you're never going to be able to identify your expansion opportunities. Accounts whose engagement is going up, accounts that have added three new users in the past 60 days and their engagement has gone up 20%. These are expansion opportunities. Accounts who have started to use some different feature sets in your product. Maybe, maybe they've tried a beta of a feature set that's at a different tier than what they're paying now. These are expansion opportunities. And again, if you don't have that data at the account level, you'll never be able to easily identify them. On the flip side, the at-risk accounts, uh, obviously, accounts whose engagement has gone down over you know, the past 30 to 60 days, accounts who have seen some users go inactive on it. Um, these are at-risk accounts. These are accounts you need to know about, you need to be alerted about, you need to take action against. Again, if you have this data at the account level, when you look at feature adoption for your existing features and especially for new features, you're looking at adoption at the account level. You want to know how many accounts are using this, this feature. How many users are, are using it or adopting it is fine, it's good, but you really want to know what percentage of my use account base is actually using this feature. And again, you need to have that data at the account level to get there. 
And finally, you know, highest level value here is you have a customer success team, you have an account management team. Um, without this data at the account level, it's really, really hard for them to prioritize their daily work. They're doing a lot of hunting and pecking in your admin interface, trying to figure out uh, which accounts need attention, which accounts need, um, need certain special type of attention. Um, and without that data aggregated, they just, they just have no way to do that. The third uh, kind of business benefit from this approach is on the marketing side. Um, I know it sounds a little silly, but bear with me here, stick with me for a minute. Uh, I think you can actually refine your acquisition efforts by having this product engagement da data at the account level correctly. Um, first of all, every marketing department wants to know who's my target market, who's, what type of company is gonna get the most value out of my product and that allow me to do more targeted, smarter marketing programs. Well, the richest source for that answer is the activity engagement of your existing accounts. By, enable, by being able to see engagement of your existing accounts and knowing which account is actually performing the best, you can start to refine who you're gonna, what type of company, what type of customer you're gonna go out there uh, and try and acquire. Look-alike campaigns, building off of that, look-alike technology is really kind of um, an essential part these days of any kind of marketing program. You know, whether that's Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn or Google Now, uh, being able to take an existing set of customers and having those technologies try and find you others like that um, is, you know, it's common now. You just have to have, be doing that kind of thing. So again, the source for those effective lookalike campaigns are those users and accounts that are most engaged with your, with your product right now. Uh, there's no one who's gonna be a better target market than the people that are already getting the most value out of your product. Case study candidates, and I would also argue, you know, any kind of advocacy program, these are always driven uh, by the people that are getting the most value from your product. So, um, if you aren't aggregating that data to the account level, you're not going to know which accounts are going to be your best candidates, who you should reach out to uh, for case studies and any kind of advocacy or referral program. That's on the marketing side. And finally, we'll switch to the sales side and why this is important on the sales side. Um, any modern SaaS uh, business needs to, especially those that have a free trial or a freemium offering, the sales team uh, needs to understand how the engagement level of those accounts that are in that stage, that are kind of pre-conversion, pre-sales. The movement is called the PQL, so these are product qualified leads. So this is the evolution of the marketing qualified lead and the sales qualified lead. Now product qualified leads are becoming uh, an essential part of the sales operation for SaaS. Uh, and what that means is, um, they may meet some marketing criteria to be a qualified lead. Uh, they may meet some sales criteria to be a qualified lead. But if they have, they've signed up for a trial, they've started to use your product in any way, if they don't reach a certain engagement level or activation level, then they're just not qualified and you shouldn't be spending your time, your, your sales time and efforts on those accounts until they get there. So, this PQL process is all about prioritizing that sales, those sales efforts, right? You want your sales team spending their time on the highest quality leads they can, because that's when you're gonna get you know, better conversion rates. That's when, you get, when you're gonna get more cost efficiency on your sales side. Um, and the only, you know, in this day and age, those product qualified leads are the highest qualified leads they can go after. Um, so, this, this process is, it's essential to this process to have that, act, um, sorry, that activity or engagement data aggregated at the account level in a way that your sales team can make sense of it and actually take action. So just in summary, these are just four ways. There are more, um, but I know I don't wanna go on too long. Um, I could probably talk about this all day, but here are the four kind of main ways that uh, main business operational value you can get out of having that account-based engagement data. Uh, it's really about understanding and driving account activation, better managing those mature accounts, driving that lifetime value. You can actually refine your acquisition efforts with this type of program and 
optimize your sales process uh, to finally get that PQL process in place that you've been talking about for the last two years. So it sounds great. I want to do it. Let's get going. How do we actually execute on this and make it happen? Um, so here's a few steps for you. Um, first thing you need to do uh, is you need to be able to organize all your users by account. So that means you need to take their, you need to be able to have their uh, product activity, their product engagement data, just organized around accounts. Um, and this gets a little technical, but if you're using segment, um, this is actually segment um, group call, but any tool that you're gonna be using to do this needs to be able to have a way to programmatically assign users to accounts. So like I said, this is, if you're using a segment, which we highly recommend, uh, this is how they do it. You make a call called a group call and every one of you, your users gets assigned a group ID uh, that, that correlates with the account um, that they belong to. And then the tools on the other end of that data can organize around that group ID. So super important, first step is you gotta organize by account. Uh, the second step is to actually score the engagement at the user level. Again, not at the account level yet, but at the user level, you need a way, a mechanism to be able to make sense of that activity data. Um, for Sherlock, that's kind of core to what we do, so um, this is kind of how we do it, but if you're gonna build a system um, yourself, you're gonna have to do something similar, which is we take, uh, all the important events or activities that your users do in your product, and you just weigh them uh, between one and 10 based on the importance of, of those features. Um, and then from there, you can then score every one of your users. So you can take the number of times they did any of those specific events in a time frame, multiply by the weight that you've given those events, and you can then get that to an engagement score. So then you'll go from every user in their usage or activity in your product, and then you can convert that into an actual score, which makes, gives it a lot more context and makes it more usable and scalable across your organization. So once you score that engagement at the user level, and you've got your, your users organized around accounts, now you can roll up that engagement to the account level. You've got those users organized with their scores, and now you can aggregate that stuff up and now you've got an actual score for the account um, that then can be ranked and shipped and, and played with. And the next step is you've now got all that data aggregated in a nice account profile where you've got all that information uh, that's essential of, about that account uh, engagement in one place. And from there you can do all kinds of segmentation and. and all the important things that you need to really operationalize all this stuff. But this is, this is where you wanna to get to. I know it sounds um, a little daunting in this quick presentation, especially if you haven't thought about it yet, um, but this is what it looks like in Sherlock when you get that data aggregated at the account level. Um, again, this is, this is kind of what the product was built to do, so I know a lot about this. Um, I know it, it sounds like a lot, but I want you to start thinking about it. If you haven't started thinking about it, I mean, if my goal here today is then to get you to think about it um, and to get you to think about it for not too long to actually start taking action about it uh, on it. Because if you're not, if you're not, um, if you're not aggregating this data at the account level and able to take action on it, I think you're really, like I said before, I think you're really missing a piece uh, of your SaaS operation. So I hope. Uh, I hope I helped clear some things up or maybe uh, open your eyes to some things here today. Uh, or at the very least, I hope we made this obvious fact a little less deceptive uh, with this, this conversation. Um, again, this is kind of what Sherlock was built to do. We'd be happy to talk more about this. Uh, if you have any questions, um, our team is always available on chat or if you want to sign up for a trial, we can, we can uh, help you start thinking about this and actually help you start taking action on it, I should say. Thanks again.